Hello everybody. Hope you all are doing well. I'm Jaya Daptardar. I'm Ayurvedic doctor, healthcare executive, aesthetician, writer and speaker. Welcome to Medical Queen's Got Talent. I'm a founder of Medical Queen's Got Talent. And in month of May, we're celebrating mental health awareness. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. So hope you can see the screen here. Okay. 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 So my today's topic is Ayurvedic wisdom for prevention and wellness of mental health. There is a disclaimer. The sole purpose of this presentation is to provide educational information about Ayurveda. This information is not intended for use in the prevention, treatment, or cure of any disease. If you have any serious acute or chronic health concerns, please consult your family physician or healthcare provider who can fully assess your individual needs and provide the care you require. Okay, so this is the statistics I received from National Alliance of Mental Health. So if you look at this, one in five United States adults experience mental illness. One in 20 U.S. adults experience serious mental illness. 17% of youth, 6 to 17 years, experience a mental health disorder. So in overall picture, you can also look at the demographics uh, and the percentage and here, this blue area is 19% anxiety disorder. And there are other percentages. But what I can say in overall picture, at least 20% experience some kind of mental illness. So what needs to be done? There are a lot of options, pharmaceutical options, People have insurance and, uh, you know, they can go and get the medicine. Each year, more than 25 million Americans are treated with antidepressants. Okay. Is it effective? Maybe effective. But there is added stress and side effects such as weight gain, lethargy, and sexual dysfunction, and so on. Where medication is the only solution or needs to integrate with other options. Recent studies have shown evidence that practice of yoga postures, breathing techniques, meditation has beneficial effects on the emotional well-being and mental equity of depression sufferers without any of the side effects. So this is a recent study, a study conducted by Eric Hoffman, PhD, measured brain waves before and after a two hour Kriya Yoga class. It found that alpha waves, relaxation um, waves, and theta waves, unconscious memory, dreams, emotions, that type of 
waves increased by 40%. This means the brain is more deeply relaxed after yoga and the subjects are in better contact, uh, a better contact with their subconscious, their subconscious consciousness and emotions. The Scandinavian study is significant for depression sufferers because after the yoga session, alpha waves increased in the right temporal lobe. So here is the health defined by WHO, World Health Organization. So in definition of health, it says, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. You know, that's what Ayurveda says. It is a balance of mind, body, and soul, harmonious balance. And if you look at the picture, it shows this man with the, with the, with the balance of the body, spirit, and mind. And the other factors involved, lifestyle, personal behavior, human biology, uh, physical environment, social environment, uh, community, culture, um, so this is similar to what 5,000 years old science says. In Sanskrit, this is the definition of health in Sanskrit by Ayurveda. Samadoshaha sama agnishya samadhatu malakriyaha prasanna atmendriya manaha swastaitya bhidiyate. What does that mean? So it means that health is when you have balanced biological energies, balanced digestive fire, nourished tissues, regular elimination of urine, sweat, and stool, a happy soul, elated senses, and a cheerful mind. In short, harmonious, optimal blending of body, mind, and soul. So why prevention and wellness is required? It's required because when you have a, a, a disease, then it takes a lot of time and money, not only yours, but uh, the insurance companies and, uh, and even uh, your company is putting the money for your insurance and then uh, the government is putting the money in uh, in healthcare so by prevention and wellness by doing something for prevention and wellness it saves the time money and suffering of the individuals and their families as well it saves sick time for the companies it improves the productivity of employees. It is important for the agencies or the corporates to pay attention to employee wellness programs and retreats. So what is Ayurveda? Ayur means life, Veda means science, Ayurveda is science of life. It is originated in India 5,000 or more years back. It is a sister science of yoga and how many uh, specialties like pediatric, internal medicine, OBGYN, ENT, etc. So what is the way of life according to Ayurveda? If you look at this picture, it's so serene, so balanced. Uh, with all the five elements of the nature. And uh, so it is a harmonious balance uh, of body, mind, and soul. So that's with the way of life. The three tr great doshas um, expressed in Ayurveda, each dosha has a specific expression. Uh, in every dimension of a uh, human being. So let's see how it goes. 
vata, when you talk about vata, it's air. And the quality of vata is it's always moving. It's always moving in the body. So all the movements of our body are due to vata. And then that's body level. Mind level, what vata does is all your thoughts coming and going, that process is vata. And then spiritual level, the energy level is the prana in your body. Pitta. The quality of pitta is heart. Pitta heats. Pitta hits the body, right? Um, and that is why we can digest the food because it's agony. And at mind level, it's our intelligence. We produce, you know, good thoughts because of pitta. And spiritual level or energy level, it's tejas. So when it gets manifested into uh, that level, the, the, the spiritual level, spiritual level, it's tejas. And um, the third is kapha. Kapha binds. We all know kapha is a binding energy. It binds the body, body parts. Um, and uh, mind level, it is, it binds the thoughts. It's, it's, it, it, it calms the mind, right? And spiritual level, it's gorgeous. It's sattva, it's gorgeous. So this is how those three body types look like and harmonious balance. So modern medicine philosophy, what modern medicine philosophy uh, says, right? Body parts get treated if they are sick, right? It's all, it's not individualized. It's all about the protocol. It's all about uh, symptom it, it's all symptomatic so wherever the pain is if it's your hand or leg or head it gets treated right mind gets treated independently if you know if you have any behavioral health problems it gets treated independently there is no uh, connection between what's going on in, in in your body when the mind is gets mind gets treated or when body gets treated, um, there is no talk about the behavioral health. Body is like a machine. You know, if one part doesn't work, it gets treated. Treatment is specific to the symptoms. Treatment is all scientifically passed, okay? And by the protocol, not individualized. It's not by the individual. Everything is robotic, not individualized. Physician and patient relationship has very little to do. It, it doesn't matter uh, that you're a long time patient, that, that there is a priority. No, there, there is nothing like that. It is all about the insurance coverage. So here is a funny picture that I found, and I thought it's it's um, it, it's it's funny. <laughs> So when you go to the doctor, uh, this person goes to the doctor just for the headache and says that my headache is like, you know, like arrow is going into my head. That's how it is. So doctor says offhand, I would say you're suffering from an arrow through your head. But just to play it safe, they have to play it safe because they're like, you know, insurance liabilities and um, and uh, their own liabilities. So um, I'm ordering a bunch of tests. So this person going to the doctor just for simple headache gets out with the bunch of lab test he has to do, then go back and get the medication. It's a long process. So what is Ayurvedic philosophy of healing? 
It is harmonious balance of body, mind, and soul. If body is sick, mind gets sick and vice versa, right? Health is living in balance with three basic constitutions. Illness is living out of balance with the constitution. Balance your eating habits and tune up with the nature to, to, to balance your constitution. Balance with herbs and, and uh, therapies as needed. So treatment is individualized according to your body type. Patient is connected with the doctor throughout his or her healing process. When uh, patient come, the uh, patients come to us, they expect us to answer right away the phone calls and text and emails. Um, and we are dedicated. We do that. But does that happen with the primary care or, or the health system here? Importance of integrating Ayurveda in prevention and care management. So that's where this importance comes in. That is, it is important to integrate this care. Ayurvedic care management uses food regimen. Then uh immediately writing the prescription and it is according to the season use of natural herbs and spices you know recommended it aims at the root cause of imbalances and long-term healing solutions it's not like immediate overnight pill it helps to make a good digestive process for a healthy and strong gut health because gut and mind, there is a relationship. It helps graceful aging process, balances the stress and depression or other, other mind imbalances. It helps building up a strong immune system by doing all this from... Uh, uh, from all the directions, it, it helps to build immune system, a strong immune system. So uh, our self power of wellness, we have power within ourselves. Too often, we underestimate the power of a touch, giving hug. We, we are forgetting all this, a smile. A kind word of humanity. A listening ear. If someone is stressed, to listen to them. All of which have the potential to turn around the life. To turn a life around. Right? Don't you agree? The philosophy of creation of human being in Ayurveda is uh, it is a Prakriti and Purush theory in Ayurveda but in the manifestation of nature nature, Prakriti the first expression you know when uh, when the fetus develops in mother's womb. What happens? Uh, what happens first? The first expression is Mahat, intelligence of cosmic order. So, the first development happens in the mind. In human beings, it is referred as Buddhi, intelligence. Next is Ahankar. The sense of self-identity, the center in our consciousness from, from which we think, act, and react. Importance of the Agarbha Sanskaras um, um, and upbringing in Ayurveda is a, a big thing. It's recommended. It's recommended to do these sanskaras um, when the fetus develops in mother's womb because that's where um, the the all sanskaras happen. And then after birth, 
the other sanskara's upbringing is important so uh, qualities of mind and these qualities of mind it it develops after um, they're there but it, it develop they develop after the sanskaras the good sanskaras they're important sattva which is equilibrium is uh, responsible for knowledge acquisition and reasoning sattva is stability it's stability purity and light rajas that's activity it is the initiator and provides the essentials uh, for initiation of thought this gets converted those thoughts converted to a deed after a judici uh, judicious use of desire effort and memory then tamas tamas is inertia it provides a calming soothing effect and in a normal stage becomes the break which controls the overactive rajas and reasoning sattva so tamas tamas controls this is inertia a balance of these three is essential so it's not like you you have to have you know purely sattvic mind purely rajasic mind purely no a balance of these three is essential for a healthy state of mind when this balance is lost totally then we have these mental disorders or if the balance tilts is changes we have conditions like anger anxiety trepidation sometimes they're normal emotions but exhibited in an intense manner so uh we spoke about state of mind what are the signs of healthy mind right as per ayurveda signs of healthy mind are taking the pro proper diet yourself you're in a good mind you will take it Uh, you know a uh, proper diet at the proper time according to the body type uh and then because of that you will have a healthy memory uh following you know good values self awareness and responsibilities uh maintaining self hygiene and cleanliness staying active fearlessness uh doing things enthusiastically so those are the signs of healthy mind what are the signs of unhealthy mind according to the theory of ayurveda psychological conditions caused by mental health disorders are anger greed jealousy sad feeling anxiety nervousness fear unhappiness so this um psychiatric conditions caused by combination of physical and mental disorders are psychosis convulsive disorders hysteria illusion drowsiness alcoholism so those are all um unhealthy mind or the imbalance between both body and mind there are many diverse reasons this happens emotional stress occupational stress trauma poor upbringing influence from disturbed individuals sexual abuse or drug abuse um excess thinking are some reasons all these impure actions cause too much anger hate fear nervousness worry apathy dullness and sleepiness um good sleep is important so what are the dosha imbalances for mind when what the dosha imbalances in the body uh what the dosha imbalances um in mind level stress anxiety insomnia depression fearfulness 
uh, those are uh, those things happen when kapha dosha uh, imbalances in mind uh, paucity of speech hypersomnia low motivation not active they're not active they don't they don't want to do anything when pitta dosha gets imbalanced in the mind what happens anger fight jealousy agitation argument blaming others these things happen so what are the ayurvedic strategies for prevention and wellness of mental health first of all self care for prevention self care is very important uh lifestyle management balance doshas and tune up with the nature purification or um, seasonal cleansing detox for elevated doshas balance food according to constitution regular sleep uh, herbal medicine to balance the imbalances if the imbalances are not balancing out with the food and food regimen and seasonal regimen according to your constitution then the solution is to use herbs herbal massage to center yourself and balance the mind there are ayurvedic therapies available uh, like marma therapy massage shirodhara yoga asanas and exercise pranayama meditation and attention to nature like season do things according to season and time of the day um and and age so here is the balance if you want to balance your mind and body you need to get your hands dirty manage your schedule to manage your life ayurveda's lifestyle management according to season is 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 a full uh full course diet sleep exercise balance mind with yoga pranayama massage and other therapies so detox or cleansing is not required just for body but that is required for mind as well the to balance the mind when we do the meditation and breathing exercises that's the detox for mind and finally tune up with with uh, nature in the season so there is a randomized controlled uh, there are randomized controlled trials trials and research is done in india because these things are practiced more authentically in india for years and that's why more studies are done, done there than here pranayama uh, yoga asanas reduce the symptoms in depressed college students these uh, there is a uh, nimhans is the center national uh, mental health institute in india it's in bangalore and they are doing all these studies and researches hatha yoga is used equivalent to psychotherapy in reducing relapses in opiate users yoga and breathing improves memory and learning capacity in normal school children hatha yoga reduces anxiety and depression in normal adults and these are the herbal uh, sorry ayurvedic therapies herbal massage and spa for mind balance shirodhara abhyang pa, uh, pada abhyanga massage head massage body massage meditation for chronic anxiety chronic pain chronic insomnia recurrent depression overall emotional well-being increase the focus or concentration there are different types of med meditations 
for different mind imbalances. This is Ayurveda's three season chart to balance with nature. When I say balance with nature, uh, you have to identify your dosha first. What dosha is, or what dosha is imbalanced. Uh, there are always two doshas involved, not not a single one. Um, and to balance with the season. Ayurveda's nature clock. So this is a nature clock to use according to uh, the time of the day there are doshas involved. And then you have your own dosha to manage that. If you are a person um, with uh, kapha, prakriti, and you're waking up late every day, then kapha in the body increases, right? Um, if you are a vata personality and you're not taking enough sleep, then the vata in the body increases. That is why it's important to have uh, the eye with the clock on your refrigerator to, to follow the timings, what time you, you should wake up according to your body type, what time you take your meal, um, what's, what's the good digestive time uh, for your personality and in general uh, to follow. So this is the research from Nimhans Bangalore. Uh, I just had a screenshot, not not that visible. Um, so Ayurveda to integrate the healing paradigm. It is Ayurveda has profound knowledge and scope. It is the five thousand year old science. And it can integrate with the other mental health modalities too to uh, to breach the gap. And these are psychotropic herbs in Ayurveda. Um, so I have the herbal effects here of those herbs. Herbs with antidepressant effect are ashwagandha and shankapushpi. Herbs with um, cognitive enhance, enhancement effect are mandap, mandukparani, ashwagandha, shankapushpi, and brahmi. Their Latin names are here. Herbs with antipsychotic effect are serpagandha and Mandukupar. Herbs with anti-anxiety effect are Jatamansi, Mandukupurni, Ashwagandha, Shankapushpi, and Brahmi. And these are the resources. These are my books that I published. And thank you very much.